welcome back to Project Air this week. Thanks for tuning in. This episode is all about the new hydroplane that I've been building and we're going to be testing it on this lake here, which is uh, Coniston Water. This is actually the fourth part of this series, believe it or not, because this boat that's in this episode right now um, was featured in a couple of episodes last year. Back then it was powered by an electric motor, or two electric motors in fact, that were on the top of a boom. And that design was really successful. Um, the hull was made of balsa wood. I spent quite a while building it. Yeah, I had quite a lot of success with it, but I didn't really get to run it very, very much uh, and it leaked and there were a few other problems with it. So what I decided to do was completely rebuild it and change the power system to an EDF. So this is now the Mark II. It's got a 70 millimeter EDF on the top of it with a thrust tube. Um, I'm quite interested to see how the thrust tube works. Okay, this is a quick overview of the boat. You've got these two sponsons here. Those are both made out of balsa wood. These are carbon fiber tubes. They hold the sponsons onto the fuselage and that's a, obviously quite a crucial strong part of the boat that needs to be uh, pretty rigid. Then you've got the fuselage itself, which again is made out of balsa wood and a bit of basswood and plywood and stuff like that. Um, this is a 3D printed uh, mount for the motor. I've been using a new 3D printer, which is an Ender 3, um, to print out parts for these builds. Just getting into designing my own stuff, so that's going well. More on that in the future. At the rear we have a rudder, and the rudder is made of a brass tube. And then you've got a servo here connected to this arm, which uh, pivots a brass um, uh, rudder on there, which uh, which is soldered to the bottom of that rod. To get the boat skimming along the surface of the water and not flipping out of it or taking off, we have to make sure that certain design factors are addressed. How this boat has been designed is that these floats, the sponsons, act as lifting surfaces, a little like a wing on an aeroplane. The force of the water hitting the bottom of these floats means that the floats and the front of the boat gets lifted out of the water. And this means that the only bit of the boat then touching the water is the very bottom. This is the same case at the back with the rear of the boat uh, and the hull being shaped into a sort of V, and that is to lift the back of the boat out of the water until it's on the smallest possible surface. And what this means with these two points here and this one point here is that you get a three-point hydroplane. A little like an aeroplane, a hydroplane works by using lift. Okay, so we've got the lift, but what's to stop it catching some air under the nose or getting unbalanced and flipping over? like some hydroplanes have famously done. Well, that comes down to this, which is the EDF on the top. The reason we have it high up here is because then this will create a force which is trying to push the nose down, whilst the floats are trying to make a force which pushes the nose up. And the balance of these two forces means that the boat remains very stable when it is working within the envelope of those, um, those two forces. I'm not sure if I explained that correctly, but um, hopefully you get the idea. Yesterday, we took this boat out on the water for the first time since it's rebuilt on a, a glassy smooth uh, lake surface. Unfortunately though, the camera that, you, that I'm filming myself on right now, something went wrong and we couldn't get the footage from that. So sorry about that. You'll have to watch this uh, sort of grainy footage from a phone that was kindly donated by one of the spectators, uh, Chris. Yes, it was a lot more maneuverable than... You've increased the size of the rudder, have you? Yeah, we have, yeah. We've made it out of pepper. Yeah. Yeah. My concern is that James said he wouldn't take it fast this time. He'd hold back. If I remember rightly on his last video there was a lot of applause. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now most people stop at this time to take on fuel. <laughs> <laughs> When I was going to full throttle, it didn't seem to be going on to full, so I wanted to see So you were going to full throttle? I was trying to. <laughs> so this is K9, is it? The doggy. Thank you. 
So what I think we'll do now is skip ahead to this evening where we'll test this again and hopefully it's going to be nice and smooth, uh, the water, so we, uh, we get some high speed runs and uh, there's no fear of the boat flipping over and doing a spectacular crash. Right, let's see how that goes. So this is the very second test run of this in its current guise, um, the boat with its EDF engine. So um, it seemed to go pretty well last night, as we know, but um, I think this time we're going to take it a bit faster if we can um, and just, yeah, have some fun with it. These ducks better watch out. There's a fish down there. Just squashed the fish. <laughs> okay. Engine on. So as you can see, we've got quite good manoeuvrability at slow speeds. And if we go high speed... That's so much fun. <laughs> then the boat lifts up and uh, skims across the surface. It's still not going full throttle for some reason. I'm going to take it out of the water and see if I can fix that. Okay. It seems like there's a bit of a problem with the throttle. So when I go full throttle, it sort of goes full throttle for a second and then um, goes back down to like 75% or maybe less than that. It's probably to do with the. Uh, it's probably just the battery, and it's not. It can't um, handle that much power being drained, for, uh, drawn from it. Okay, situation is that this battery is not as big as I thought it was, and the boat is slowly dying. We can make it. I think it. we're going to get in. We can make it to the shore, come on. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, then please remember to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below. Talk to me in the comments, tell me what I should be building next, and all of that good stuff. So yes, thank you so much for watching, really appreciate it, and I will catch you on the very next project. See you then.